Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode we will bring you our favourite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you, and we're here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more, you create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. I'm so excited for this week's episode because I have one of my Dear friends and colleagues, Jamie Hearn are with us today, and we're going to be diving in and talking about accessing your intuition and being guided by spirit. And I cannot wait for you to all meet this wonderful, wonderful woman. Jamie Hearn is an intuitive oracle and spiritual teacher who is passionate about working with high achieving spiritual women to curate the life of their dreams through accessing the divine feminine and inner sovereign power that is her birthright. Through her coaching, readings and retreats, Jamie empowers women to release self-judgment, tap into true clarity of path and purpose and reconnect to sacred wisdom so they can consciously create the life that they're truly worthy of. Oh, yes, please. And in addition to hosting the most amazing podcast, which is Bitches and Dead People, Jamie has a thriving international coaching practice, is an Akashic Records expert and teacher and has been a successful attorney for more than 20 years. Walking with a foot in each world allows Jamie to intentionally and intuitively guide her clients to the ideal strategy for their individual situation with flow, ease and grace. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that you're here and it's just a complete honour for me to be able to introduce you to all our listeners as well because I know they're going to absolutely love you and all your wisdom and I just have to give you kudos for the best podcast title out there. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> thank you <laughs> I love it I love it I love it so Jamie we chat a lot of course I've known you for a few a few years now actually we've been in mastermind yeah. together for, for a while which is just I just love that we uh we share we share that and when I go into another mastermind oh hi Jamie you're here again <laughs> <laughs> right we keep connecting and uh I love it love it so we've talked a lot about how spirit has shown up in pretty much everything that you've done. I wanted to ask you a question. Do you always, do you always listen? (laughs) No. Um, (laughs) I have definitely gotten better at responding commensurately with whatever guidance I'm receiving. But there are times even still that I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. And they're like, oh, but you must. Um, Over the weekend, We are restoring a farmhouse that's been in my family for a few centuries. And my great grandmother is very present there. So usually she just moves things and there's one cabinet door that she really likes to open. When I went in over the weekend, she has, she doesn't want me to change certain things. She, her position is it was good enough for me. It should be good enough for you. And I'm like, Graham, come on. That was 1903. This is 20, 22. Like, um, she was the, she was the one who kept the ringer washer into the 1990s because it was broke. It wasn't broke. You didn't need to get a new one, but anyway. Um, so I have been kind of pushing back against the messages I've been receiving from her. And when I walked in over the weekend, I closed the door, I put all my stuff down on the table and her cabinet f- flew open, smashed against the the cabinet, the rest of the cabinets and stuff started cut, like coming out. I was oh, like, wow. okay, I see you and I hear you, 
but we're still getting rid of the washing machine. (laughs) (laughs) She spoke loud and clear. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That is phenomenal. I love it. (laughs) And I love how relaxed you are because that's quite a dramatic (laughs) conversation to have. It's kind of normal for me. My husband was not as comfortable with it. He wasn't there. I just told him what happened afterward. And his response was, I'm never spending the night in that house. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It's a she house now. It's all my space. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh, I love it. I love it. And what happens when you do listen? Normally things go beautifully. Even if I don't expect they will. Mm. Um, the, the guidance that I receive sometimes feels like it's taking me off the path that I'm on, but it always turns out perfectly. Um, another, I, I seem to have a lot of guidance around restoration projects that I do. <laughs> I was working on a pre-Civil War church and I was having a hard time finding the right contractor for me. There were a few issues at the church that were coming up. Like one of my sons was like, this place is creepy. Um, (laughs) And it did have a a pretty unique energy. But the guidance I received was forget looking for a contractor. That's too 3D. Find a shaman. And of course, I have a few shaman friends in my circle because I mean, like, what witch or medium doesn't have shaman friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I invited a shaman in and had the property cleared and cleansed of any negative energy event, anything that, that wasn't favorable to me. And that brought in a whole new option of contractors and vendors and other people that I didn't realize I even needed. But it was that little step off the path that got me back to the path with ease and grace. Oh, yes, I love that. It is being able to to trust the messages that you are given, isn't it? Even if a logical mind's going, I actually think I know better. (laughs) that's essentially where we're kind of contradicting it isn't it absolutely i'm gonna go with what the ego mind is saying (laughs) the logical mind (laughs) and then afterwards it's like that face palm moment of (laughs) right you thought you knew better but actually not (laughs) (laughs) i love it that is such a powerful result to to have in you know in your, in your own life and I know you've got countless stories um, for yourself and for your for your clients as well in terms yep. of you know how how spirit shows up and how how important it is to be able to trust the messages that we are being given yes and that seems to be a a primary issue for a lot of my clients is they receive message and then they're like oh it's one of two things. They're either saying, oh, that was just me. That wasn't spirit. Like that, that's a voice in my head. Well, that voice in your head may in fact be spirit because spirit shows up in a variety of issues. For each of us, it's different. Sometimes spirit does show up in your own voice, which is super confusing, <laughs> but you, yeah. you have to develop a way to discern what is your information and what is external coming to you um and sometimes spirit shows up without a voice it's just a knowing which is a little more difficult to discern so i'll check in with that and and ask that knowledge like were you here yesterday did i already know you or is this something i need to pay attention to and i will get an answer the clarity of that answer varies based on the information so the process of discerning and trusting is critical to the development of any listening Um, and then the other 
hurdle that I see a lot with people. They will receive information and then say, okay, well, I got this piece of information and I just don't know what to do with it. So I don't know. So they're clear that it's information from spirit. They just don't know what now. Mm. And that's a continuum of development that all of us are in. I've been a medium my whole life and I've been developing it for decades. So just because I do this regularly doesn't mean I'm not still in that continuum. Oh, do you know what? I think you've just let all the listeners who are perhaps earlier on in their development go, oh, breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> because it is that, you know, we both teach Akashic Records with the Soul Journeys Method. And, um, you know, certainly that is one of the questions that comes up for people is that, yeah. that the doubt kicks in. Um, as you know perhaps I have an initial yes I'm connected I'm, I'm receiving my messages my clear senses are opening up whichever one they may have a, you know a preferred um, an initial preferred way to receive the messages like you're saying about the clear cognizance um, or, or auditory but hearing your own voice um, yeah. and often it's almost like people can feel like oh no she's getting visuals I want clairvoyance somehow one of them is better than the other if that makes sense <laughs> So we've got one, let's say we were, I'm clear, I'm really clear sentient. So I really feel things in the, in my body and I'll get a knowing. So if someone's got a pain, yeah, I get the pain. Thanks. But at the moment I know who, whose it is, it goes once I've got the message. So I'm like, right, give me the message because <laughs> <laughs> this has got to go. <laughs> but it's like, we are actually, oh, that one looks better. I feel, feel like clairvoyance might, might feel better, but it's knowing that they're all, I always say to my clients as well is that um, spirit will use the what's there, the pathways that are there, and then you can develop and grow on that. So if you do want to perhaps be more clairvoyant or to um, develop your mediumship, you can. It's that open, yeah. isn't it? And like you were saying, it's being on that journey and knowing it's you're learning a new language effectively. Like yeah. if you set out to learn Polish, I've tried to learn Polish. It's a superpower. I haven't got it. Um, but I didn't expect to be able to be fluent in Polish on the, my first lesson. Right. So, so that makes sense as an analogy. <laughs> um, I know a few words in Polish and I always seem to have them come through in messages from spirit. Do you? So, <laughs> so it's funny, funny that you mentioned you that. <laughs> what 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 words come through um well they're they're very cordial they'll come through and say Jean dobre like like hello a good good yeah. day um and then they then they'll they'll show me symbols typically yeah. i also will get a strong um and i don't speak polish really i only know these like smattering of words oh. um mleko comes through a lot too and that honestly i'm not sure on the pronunciation of that but it means milk um and so the the connection for me on with that word is maternal nurturing not actually like a gallon of milk like like the, like the actual like the translation would be but but it's really interesting how i've picked up those words from spirit i also get a lot of french words from spirit and I speak French well enough to speak to a three-year-old, which you may you may have heard some of my tales of chatting with three-year-olds in random parks in France. They seem to flock to me, but whatever. <laughs> um, That's gorgeous. <laughs> right. And, and I have three-year-old competency when it comes to French. Okay. Um, but I will have to go and look up the words that I receive sometimes just so I'm clear on the interpretation. Then I have to build it into my own lens of why and what I'm getting that word for. That's amazing. So you're a multilingual or bilingual medium. <laughs> Ish. Ish. <laughs> That's fantastic. And you know, I spent a year learning Polish. To, uh, I can only just remember Jean Dobre. <laughs> 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 That's amazing.
game is getting these downloads for right? <laughs> language. Um, it is. It's, it's complicated when you're kind of coming from an English background, I think. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you're one of, uh, I have a lot of uh, Polish um, members of our community because mm. um, I used to actually go and spend uh, for about a year. I went to Warsaw every every month. Oh, wow. Yeah, which was wonderful. And uh, that's why I had the intention of learning Polish. Um, and then realized that everyone while I was out there wanted to practice their English on me, which was a lot easier. So I was <laughs> going down that route. <laughs> um, but that's just, I just love that, Jamie. It's just phenomenal. And thank you so much for sharing that because it is that that how the messages will come through is going to be completely different for, for everybody. Right. And, and um, I think you've just given a beautiful example around that, the, the, the word milk, actually not necessarily mean go and drink a glass of milk. Yes. But the interpretation of it and the, the nurturing around it, because some I'll often get asked the question as well around, I've had this message, I've been shown, let's say I've been shown a book and this, this, and this was coming out of it. You know, piano keys were coming out of it or whatever it may be. What does it mean? And I'm like, well, ask your guides what it means because yeah. it could mean completely different if you had that message or I had that message and we were reading different people. Right. And it's that thing of it being, it's like your, your, your own language that you are creating, not a universal one. Exactly. And I always recommend to people that I'm working with to create a symbol journal because the same symbols will come through leading you to the same meaning. Mm. So the quicker you can interpret them and recognize them, the easier it is to discern what message is coming through. Yeah, I love that. Can I borrow that and recommend of that to my Of course you may. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, credit you. <laughs> That's such a such a, um, a a good way to think of a symbol journal being very specific. So like you've got the Oxford Dictionary, you've got your own Akashic Dictionary. Um, that's that's just a you know gold right there that you you shared. Thank you so much. Um, and I know that you've had a. Lots has happened for you along your journey. And you, you when we were talking earlier, we talked about, you know, you, you met your twin flame and that kind of kickstarted a whole load of other things. Tell us about <laughs> how you met your twin flame and, you know, what happened? Well, I was in an unhappy marriage and I, I don't know, did we talk that I'm a, I'm an attorney in some visage of this life? <laughs> And a bunch of past lives. What? Yeah. <laughs> I just love that you, you're the most incredible energy healer, medium, and an attorney. The two that, you know, consciously in my mind might not necessarily go together. Right. I consider it a juxtaposition. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so I encountered this, this person in my practice as an attorney. And it was an immediate knowing that I had a connection. Mm. And the connection really precipitated my whole world changing. It was fast and furious and intense and oh so toxic. But in the moment, it's hard to recognize the level of toxicity that you've just immersed yourself in. Mm. So that meeting triggered a lot of things for me on this journey and opened up some really interesting channels that were probably there before, but I had no conscious ability to utilize them. Um, did I tell you about the time that I saw that guy having sex with someone else? No. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> so I I had gone to visit my family and he had gone to visit someone else. Clearly not the person he told me he was going to visit, but you know, that's neither here nor there. So my guides woke me up at night and said, basically, you need to see this and tapped me into a thread of seeing what was going on where he was. So I got to witness him cheating on me with this girl whose name I like, like she 
I knew her, but she still kind of remains faceless in the recollection of that. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was a stark awakening to the level of toxicity that I was mired in. So naturally that relationship then wrapped up, but it was a lot of effort to clean up the residue from that twin flame experience. And I know because it's what I do that I had to experience that in this incarnation and it created fertile soil for a much healthier relationship going forward but I needed to clean things up with myself first. Mm. So that gave me a really intense, uncomfortable experience that I was limiting some of the connections that I had. So it gave me the opportunity to strengthen those and recognize my own power in my connection. So yeah, it was, um, an interesting experience that I think a lot of people get stuck in that toxic sludge, we'll call it. (laughs) it, Sludge, yeah. And don't necessarily take the opportunity to move through it and heal it. But that's one of the most powerful things that came out of that experience with me. That's phenomenal. It, it, I love how you call it sludge because it feels like it can it sticks, doesn't it? It's like yeah. you can't quite get, get it off you. Totally. Um, and it just that just felt like a really beautiful way to describe it. And anyone who's experienced that or perhaps had friends that experienced it, because when you're supporting friends that are going with going along a journey like that, you can see it as well. You feel the sludge too. It's it, yeah. it feels like it just is sludgy and it goes everywhere and it starts to seep into all aspects of of life even though you're trying to kind of contain it and thinking oh something's feeling wrong what is it I can't (laughs) quite put a finger on it or can't quite get out yeah that's huge that's phenomenal to be able to as well for your guys to be tapping on the shoulder going you need to see this to be able to kind of (laughs) whoa I have that vision to be able to to go and to to see right and I I had always known I had the vision but never stepped into it that clearly and precisely. Like I would see things before and just be like, oh yeah, that that's, you know, maybe interesting. I'll check it out later. And really just never circle back, never pay attention to it. But this was a very affronting experience that is like, now is the time. love that they've got your back haven't they they just go right jamie needs to see this now so that she's got that capacity to be able to grow and heal and move on to that onto that next that next level what where's spirit guiding you next um that's a really great question because i have been trying to navigate where to go next and of course i was in a little bit of push energy, not just letting things flow to the point where I was finally like, whatever, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to lean back and have my coffee on the porch and not talk to anybody. (laughs) Like I mentioned. (laughs) Um, and all of a sudden, as soon as I surrendered the drive that I was trying to create with a friend approached me and said, you know that there are a lot of people in the world trying to figure it out, right? And I said, of course I know that. I work with them all the time. And she then asked me if I would be willing to create a psychic development school with her. So that is where spirit is leading me next. We are in the process of creating an academy for women primarily and a couple really cool dudes to tap into their own personal connections and follow that thread wherever it leads them with structured support and guidance and mentorship because that's i that's where i really floundered is when i didn't have that person to send an email to and say hey this is going on what do you think i should do about this and i'm so fortunate now to have 
a group of friends and colleagues that are really great support and sounding boards and mentors. So I want to be able to share that with people. Oh my word, this is like so exciting. I love it. I absolutely love it. This is going to be phenomenal. When when is this launched? Is it about to be launched? Where where is it in the the, the so, timeline that we run on? <laughs> it will be launched in the fall. Mm. Um, we're planning to use an academic like schedule, so we'll be kicking off in the fall. Oh, I love that. I love it. This is the sort of thing where I always imagine. Imagine. I know that they've started bringing in mindfulness and yoga into schools, but. Just imagine if this was, instead of maths, <laughs> you could have psychic development at school. That could be an option that you could go for, like <laughs> in mainstream school. Because I know that I there love are it. savvy people out there that will be providing this for their, for, their, for their children as well. But can you imagine that instead of, you know, it being suppressed, because it can get suppressed, can't it, as, as children along the way, yes. you've got to undo all of that. Um, you know, actually listen to your intuition, don't you know, <laughs> suppress it. What kind of world, the, the, the evolution of the planet and the consciousness, if we were to really just nurture that as, as mainstream. So I love that it's, you're mirroring the school curriculum, the school year. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyone who is in my younger son's 10th grade biology class did get a little bit of a lesson that is outside the mainstream. His teacher assigned him a project to present how life evolved from a water molecule. He chose to go a different path and he gave a well-researched presentation on how life evolved from aliens. And oh. <laughs> I love it. I, I was fully supportive of him. <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> How did it go down at the uh, with the teacher? The teacher was not impressed. He oh. he also it, he's got a very sharp edge to him. So he didn't come off with the respect for his teacher's project that he potentially could have as he digressed into his own position statement. So he didn't pass. But I was fine with that because he demonstrated his own unique thought process and wasn't interested in drinking their Kool-Aid. So I was fine with it. Oh, I love it. That is yeah, it's brilliant. And being able to recognize that, to have that autonomy of actually this, this is rubbish. You know, I'm not going to drink your Kool-Aid, I, I think, because it's. I talk about this with my son a lot around the sort of undoing the programming that we get at school, yeah. not only from the teachers, but what's come from the government that's come down through the through the teachers and then the, all the cultural stuff and then all the um, expectations from our peers, <laughs> all of yeah. that, it's, it's filtering into our consciousness um, and being it. And I think when people are, you know, empaths and aware and slightly sort of taking a step back and can feel something's not quite right, they are able to have that um, different perspective. Even if, yeah. you know, you can be you can be judged for it, can't you, at that, at, in those experiences earlier on, which... <laughs> Even as an adult, you you face judgment for that and a lot of self judgment. That's a great skill to start working on is releasing some of the self judgment. If you have a thought or a preference or an inclination about something that isn't in the societal norm, go with it and let yourself be free in that moment. It's perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's exactly it. And it's knowing as well. It's thinking about some of the thoughts that we pick up. They're not even ours. You know, they've just right. hanging out in our field programming us. It's like, no, <laughs> I don't like that yes. one. Like, take a different one for a spin. That one can this go. one, this one doesn't serve me. Let's <laughs> yeah, like to pick it out like a knit. Yes. Believe it. Off you go. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't come in ones, do they? They come in like clusters. <laughs> 
<laughs> Got to get rid of them all. Oh dear, I think that's just forever, Jamie. What is there a question that you wish I'd asked you? You know that we haven't uh, chatted about yet. Um, yeah, you, I would love for you to ask me who my favorite witch, bitch, or dead person is. Okay, okay. You ready for, <laughs> I've got a great question for you. Who is your favorite witch, bitch, or dead person? Well, I have a <laughs> list, but let me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I was just recently in New Orleans, and the subculture of the French Quarter is dynamic and palpable the connection with French heritage is also something that's really compelling to me. So Joan of Arc is who is also on this journey after I got back from Poland and she said, Hey Jamie, we lost you just at the moment when you said about Joan of Arc. Oh no. <laughs> the energy got really strong. <laughs> <laughs> Who is doing that? <laughs> yeah. I know. Clear it. <laughs> um so I'm not sure where I was in my in my explanation, but Joan of Arc is very present for me universally. And there's this beautiful golden statue of Joan of Arc in New Orleans. One of my friends had tapped into my energy while I was there. She and I are very close, so we have kind of an open door policy. And she said, Joan of Arc is with you. I then sent her a photograph of me standing in front of the Joan of Arc statue that I had taken a few hours before that. Oh, wow. So I would pick Joan of Arc right now. She's powerful and dynamic, and she was born for this. Yes, I love Joan of Arc. You know, she really spoke to me as a child, Mm. you know, learning about her, the power. Oh, she's such a fantastic role model. I love that you have that connection with your friend as well, that she was like, yeah, (laughs) Joan of Arc's with you. Yeah, she is actually, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, I love it so much. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. And I know you very generously have a free gift for our listeners. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the the free gift? Absolutely. I have a process that will help you to tap into your intuition and strengthen your connection with your inner voice. So using just a few basic tools gives you the opportunity to really focus on the discernment that we talked about earlier. Love it. Thank you so, so much. So we'll pop the the link to that below in the show notes so everyone can download that and benefit from that. I know that people will absolutely love that. And where can people, you know, find you online? How can they stay connected with you? You can find me on my website. It's jamiehearn.com and it's J-A-M-I, no E, thanks mom. (laughs) Uh, or on social media, on Facebook, I have my business page is called Live Your Divinity with Jamie and on Instagram at Jamie underscore Hearn. Beautiful. Oh, thank you so much, Jamie. And I know everyone will have just loved our conversation today. Please do reach out and claim your free gift from Jamie and go and hang out in her world so you can benefit from more of her wisdom and conversations and do be sure to check out her podcast which is bitches and dead people because it is just phenomenal thank you so much Amy thank you it's always a pleasure to chat with you lots and lots of love thank you everybody for joining us this week and until next time we will see you very soon lots and lots of love Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.